Greetings, YouTube. Danny Staten here for the Daily Dan Blog main channel. And we're looking at Chamber of Chills, a 20 cent comic book from who the hell knows what year because nobody wrote it on the label. So we're about to pop it open and have a look inside and do all the cool stuff we always do. First, I'm going to notice that this book has a little bit of crinkling around the edges, but I'll be able to tell more when I get her out the bag, right? So let me do that real quick. All right, YouTube, I got that bad boy out the bag. And check this out. I am loving this art so far. Mm-hmm. That is some good art right there, buddy. That thing looks like the thing, you know, from the Fantastic Four a little bit. That's kind of cool, I guess. But it's some kind of mud monster, I think. Not a Bigfoot or nothing, no. Coming up, we got the farmer and this great cover. A little damage around the edges. Nothing to cry about. A nice 20 cent comic book. Number six. Let's check out the year. Looks like a 1973 there, boys and girls. And let's get jump right into the story with some creepy art here. Kind of like on the cover. The thing's mucking around the back. Farmer John's checking on his horses over here. I like the hillbilly aspect of this book, but I'm really digging this art. This book has great art, and it's got that feel. That old classic comic book feel that you really dig. I'm going to check out the story for a second, and let's see what happens. Well, this book don't waste no time getting to it, YouTube. The little girl is shocked. The creature goes ape shit. It's killed a few people. Now it's going to get the girl, too. Oh, my God, he got the girl, too. Wow. Look, that's a Bigfoot-looking picture standing by the moon, isn't it? I like that art. That's making me happy. I'm seeing something I like. Wow. I can't cuss. Darn it. You know, I only use profanity when I'm totally disappointed in the book. See that girl's butt? Her ass is dead. All right, blah, blah, blah. And then the monster goes on. And apparently, oh my God. They've called out Hitler to come kill the monster. But that wasn't necessary because the stupidest shit that ever happened, the monster went grrrr and died in the field, gasping for air on page four. What the fuck? I'm, I'm sorry. I was worried for a minute there. I thought I was going to start cussing. But some mad scientists found the creature and are trying to save it? Really? Ah, oh, fake young Hitler here. This guy wants to make it some kind of bioweapon. That was really cool to be happening back in 1973. So, on the next page, you get some bleasy ad about some broke back mountain cowboy bleas. Eh, I can live without that. Hey, check this out. Adolf gets word that the monster has been revived. And, of course, it immediately pulls the Frankenstein crap. What? It's true. He pulls the Frankenstein crap. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's loose. And it's going to trash the town and kill all the people in the town, I guess. And Wow. Is this a Frankenstein kind of ripoff thing going on here? Here's a shocker, ladies and gentlemen. It turns out the mad scientist working for Mr. Hitler over here had created the monsters. Yes, it's true. He had created the monsters in a bio lab. So really, they were already his experiments. That's, I guess that's why they tried to save it, huh? So, YouTube, they got the torches lit. Just like Frankenstein, the monster was captured and chained to a tree by the village folks. But you know what? Five seconds later, he tears loose, breaks loose, and escapes, and we get the first good look at his freaking horrible, bleasy face. Oh, my God. That face is not good. That is a horrible face. So they used the Lady Frankenstein bleeds to tie to a tree to attract the male one where they actually brought him down and captured him once more. Finally captured the creature again. And this book is just all over the place. So they capture it and bring it back to the lab again. And you know what happens. The damn thing escapes a freaking again. Mr. Hitler is all upset because his monster got away. Again, look, look, the damn thing's running through the swamp. Again. Wow. Wow. And it ends all happily with... What? He farted out 10,000 more just like him. 
now we're going to have a war, but it's the end, and then it was over. Oh, wow, that's really freaking weird. But with this comic, it's the gift that keeps giving. Look at this guy. Sattva sore eyes. And this guy definitely has some sore freaking eyes. In the second tale in this wonderfully long, drug out book. I guess these bitches are having a problem too. So this is the tale of two old hags. Stashing all their riches and treasure. In their old house. And Mr. Bug Eyes here. Mr. Bug Eyes, he breaks in to steal their crap. Yes, it's true. I'm going to steal all these old ladies' crap. But his attempt to steal all the old ladies' crap is thwarted by the ugliest butler who ever lived in Ratsy Mountain hollers for help. And in an ironic twist, the old ladies capture him and pluck his freaking eyes out. Wow. Just didn't see that one coming at all. I really didn't. And they plucked his eyes out and kept him alive. Kept him alive to torture him. Oh, that's, that's just horrible. And YouTube, it turned out the old lady was an alien. Look at his four-eyed, bug-eyed bat who plucks other people's eyes out to replace her freaking own. Wow. And sadly to say, that's the way the story ends, I swear to God. That is horrible. But, eh, the first story was pretty good and the art was great, so I can't complain about this book that much. And they fill up the back of the book with a bunch of fluff. You know, little stories and letters from the viewers and all that good crap that nobody really cares about. And this little ad for some upcoming crazy crap on sale in July of 73. Wow. July of 73. It's July of 2020. <laughs> Ironic. And YouTube, I always love the end of the books with all the cool ads for the cool stuff you could order back in the day. You can't order none of this stuff. Maybe the flight blood. But you can't order none of this stuff no more. That's sad. It's really sad that you can't order these neaty little gadgets. Wow. Well, YouTube, I guess that concludes my little look at Chamber of Chills, number six, from 1973. I have to give this book a big thumbs up. It didn't make me cuss, rant, or raise too much cane. I love the art. I love the cover. This last story was a little slow and a little weird, but the first one was really cool. and has some great graphics. I like the Bigfoot-looking creature. I guess I'm going to end this now. I went a little bit long for one comic, haven't I? Danny Staten, Blood Daddy Dan Block, main channel. Say like, subscribe, and ring the bell for me. Blog over, dudes.